Hey guys, how are you doing? In this video, I want to talk about a topic that almost all engineers disagree with me on. It's slightly controversial, so keep an open mind and follow along. Before we start, I wanted you guys to know that I'm trying out this light and studio setup for the first time. I don't know how it works and I've always been using my webcam to record, but this is the first time I'm using a proper camera, DSLR camera to record the video. Um, so let me know how, how it looks and I'm just trying this out. I don't know how, it, how it's going to look like um, when the video is ready. So just trying it out. With that out of the way, I want to talk about today's topic, which is frameworks. Basically, I discourage depending on frameworks. Now notice that I didn't say discourage using frameworks or uh, leveraging frameworks to build quick products, right? I said depending on frameworks. I'll explain the difference to you. So we'll talk about some of the issues that come with using frameworks. And towards the end of this video, I'll also share some tips and solutions with you on how you can use frameworks without becoming dependent on them. So stick around till the end of this video so that you can see those solutions. Now, don't get me wrong. Frameworks are cool and they make your work easier and faster, but they're not necessarily extremely reliable. Now, in my videos, you've seen me use multiple frameworks like Fiverr, Jin, G, and in some videos, I don't use any frameworks at all. And I do that just to show you that you can achieve the same results without using any frameworks. Now, this also means that I don't support any particular framework. And I believe that they're just tools and that you as a developer should be able to work with just about any framework. So in essence, all I'm saying is that frameworks are not important. I'm a huge believer that developers and engineers should be able to think from first principles. This means that they should understand things or concepts from a core principles level, and they should be able to build or derive frameworks from scratch if necessary. Now I've listed four different reasons, depending on their importance, on why depending on frameworks can be, lead to a lot of big problems um, in your life. Um, so the first one, I'll go through them all one by one. So the first one is interviews, specifically coding interviews. Now, let's say you're interviewing at a top tech firm and during the interview, they give you a problem to solve. And many times, as you must have noticed, if you've gone to coding interviews, you have already noticed that you don't have the luxury of using frameworks during the coding interview round. This means that if you're dependent on a framework, you're already screwed, right? The second one is production security. Now, production level apps require more security. You know that. So since uh, the framework could be open source and almost everybody would have access to the source code, this means that everybody would know its vulnerabilities. This means that it's a bad option to use it in a critical production grade application where you know that the security, uh, security is paramount. The third reason is team scalability. Now let's just say that your company has just received a huge amount of funding. It might become difficult for you to find and train developers to work on this particular framework that you've been using up to this point thereby increasing communication overheads and delays in feature releases. See, frameworks introduce a lot of magic or abstraction, which means that they do a lot of things under the surface that you're probably unaware about or don't understand how they're working. And this makes you liable to depend on them and start using frameworks as crutches. Now, the fourth and uh, very important reason is support. So frameworks are mostly maintained by communities of open source developers. Now, I'm not talking about highly funded frameworks like React and Angular that basically were internal projects of Facebook and Google, and now they've become open source. I'm talking about more of the small, smaller frameworks out there that exist, uh, that are maintained by developers that are working on the side on a full-time job and on the side that they're working on this framework and they're maintaining it on the side. And so these kind of frameworks, the smaller ones, comprise about 95% of all frameworks out there. Um, React and Angular, those big frameworks are just 5% of the ones that are out there, right? So I'm not talking about them at, at the moment. So um, the issues which happens with these smaller frameworks is that when there's a big life uh, change, like job change or, um, you know, country change in the life of any of the core members of the team uh, of this open source developer team, right? Then um, chances are that the slowly, uh, slowly the framework will start to die off. So the core member, you know, he has a major life change or life event or something like that. And then once he leaves or once he stops focusing on this open source project, uh, and in most of the pro like frameworks, there are two or three of these linchpin or core team members, right? So even if one or maybe two or three of these guys leave, then the framework slowly starts to die off. 
And after a few years, it's completely stopped. Like all support is completely stopped. So this is a huge issue because imagine if you've built and released a huge product based on this kind of a framework and suddenly it's not supported. Uh, now that's a big issue, right? Um, you're now stuck in the middle of nowhere and have to rewrite a lot of code from scratch and migrate everything to a new tech stack. And this is a big problem. Uh, now it's all not negative. So I have a couple of solutions also that I want to share with you. So here are three solutions that I have. The first is using frameworks during POC or MVP stages. And when your tech or SaaS product uh, receives product market fit, uh, by the way, if you don't know what product market fit is, uh, you should go and check it out um, because product guys, they know about it, but us engineers, we uh, don't read about product market fit, but it's a very important concept. You have to know about it. Okay. So, uh, so when your tech product receives product market fit or it receives a great amount of funding, and you want to scale up and you have the runway, you have the time uh, and the money and the resources to do this now, uh, consider getting rid of your frameworks and writing as much code from scratch as possible uh, because you have the money to hire great resources, you have the money to hire a lot of resources, a lot of developers, right? So that's when you should um, ideally not be using frameworks, right? And you should be using frameworks to just to quickly build POC or MVP level products because you're not sure if the market will accept your product or not whether it will make you any money or not. The second is understanding technologies that you work with very deeply. This means, let's say if you're learning Golang, check out the documentation of the most common frameworks out there like Jin, Fiber, etc. Uh, because these frameworks have been built uh, by people like you and me. And the code is super easy to understand. right? So once you understand how they've, uh, they've been built, um, you can still use them and not be dependent on them because you know how they work from the inside, right? And if required, you can build something like that on your own from scratch. And you know how, it, so once you know how it works, uh, you are not dependent on it. Now the third solution, if you're concerned about the security of your production grade application, like let's say you're working on a government project. So by the way, I consult the government on a few projects and they're mission critical, so they cannot have any issues. So I'm the right guy to be telling you uh, about this. So if you're concerned about the security, but you do not have the time to write your own frameworks from scratch, which uh, happens to me a lot, you can pick up an existing framework and make a lot of changes to it and then use it. So by the way, this is a huge in industry insider hack, and I may just have told you the key to working on huge million dollar uh, government projects. Right? So you just have to make enough changes to the framework that the basic functionality remains the same, but it becomes totally unrecognizable. Right. Only then you can use it. So that makes it secure. And oh, again, all of this only works if you're not dependent on any frameworks and you know how everything works, uh, how the internals work right properly. Now, I hope you learned a great deal from this video. And it's also possible that you may not agree uh, with me on most of these points, which is completely okay. But I want to help you become a killer developer, right? And a developer that's uh, in the top 1% of all engineers and developers out there. And um, you can only uh, achieve your true potential if you understand things deeper and better. So subscribe to this channel for more awesome content. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.